In certain cases, instead of migrating your application and databases to AWS, it makes sense to stay in your data center. I know what you guys and girls are thinking. Raj has finally gone mad. <laughs> but let's take a look at a couple of use cases. Let's say your business and your data center is in such a location that there are no AWS region nearby. Or maybe your application requires super low latency response. One example is in medical field, uh, if you are monitoring the biometrics uh, for a sensitive patient, uh, you need to do computation super fast, get the response and maybe act on it. In these cases, even a millisecond is valuable. Or maybe the data for your application is too sensitive to leave the data center. But you want to run AWS services in data center. You want that fully managed AWS experience and maybe majority of your workload already runs in AWS. And even for the applications that running in data center, uh, you want the same AWS look and feel, same SDKs for all your workloads, uh, data center included. Say hello to Outposts. So Outposts is a rack of AWS servers delivered to your data center. And AWS technicians will install it in your company data center. It has the same AWS look and feel. You can use console, API, or SDK and it has consistent experience for your Outpost workload and regular AWS workload. And it runs AWS services. Okay, let's take a closer look at Outpost connectivity. So on the right, you have your company data center, and on the left is AWS regions across the globe. So on your company data centers, traditional servers are running, and now AWS technicians install the AWS Outpost or AWS rack of servers inside the same data center. So this Outpost can communicate with your traditional servers using local gateway and customer gateway, which is super low latency. So any applications which is running in AWS Outpost can communicate with any application or database in these traditional servers running in the same company data center. On top of it, AWS Outpost can also connect to your nearest AWS region using AWS Direct Connect or AWS VPN. So let's think about that for a minute. This AWS Outpost, which is a rack of servers, which can run AWS services in your company data center, can communicate with your applications and databases in your traditional servers in incredibly low latency as well as connect to your applications running in AWS regions. This is an incredibly powerful hybrid experience. Looking a little deeper on Outpost to your regular AWS uh, connectivity, in your AWS Outpost, uh, you can have subnets, and that subnet can communicate with the subnets defined in the VPC in your regular AWS region. And a single Outpost have some high availability built in, However, you can buy more than one Outpost and create even more high availability. So what services can Outposts run currently? Uh, it can run EC2, uh, EBS, uh, EKS, RDS, EMR, and S3 is coming this year. So what are some of the benefits of Outposts? Number one, run AWS services in data center, which is incredible. As we saw, AWS Outposts supports EC2, EBS, Kubernetes running on EKS, uh, database RDS, and some more. Number two, uh, you can store and process data on premises. Uh, so AWS Outposts allow you to securely store and process customer data that needs to remain on premises or in countries where there is no AWS region. Uh, this is important for companies in highly regulated industries and countries with data sovereignty requirements. Number three, fully managed infrastructure. AWS Outpost is fully managed and supported by AWS. Uh, your Outpost is delivered, installed, monitored, patched, and updated by AWS. With Outpost, you can reduce the time, resources, uh, operational risk, and maintenance downtime required for managing IT infrastructure. And number four, uh, this is one of the most powerful reasons to use Outpost. 
it is truly consistent hybrid experience. By offering the same infrastructure, services, APIs, management and operations on premises as in the cloud. So generally other hybrid solutions require the use of different APIs, uh, manual software updates or purchase of third party hardware and supports. However, let's say uh, you have most of your workload running in AWS and you train your staff on how to uh, create, run your applications in AWS. All that is applicable to Outpost. You don't have to retrain your employees on new ways to manage services uh, on Outpost because it has the same consistent experience both in the regular AWS cloud as in Outpost. Okay, so how about we try to buy one Outpost? Okay, I'm in my trusty AWS console. Uh, so I'm going to search for Outpost. Here we go. Okay, uh, let's click uh, Browse Catalog. Let's see what options we are available. Uh, so you can see since Outpost is a rack of server, uh, you have to select based on your uh, workload, right? Uh, so let's say if you are running some memory intensive workload, you can select this memory optimized large unit. And then this outpost, you can spin up to 11 R5 24X large instances. And total EC2 capacity is uh, 12 R5 24X large uh, because AWS keeps one for redundant in case uh, one fails. And then the terabyte capacity is 11 plus. Also, there are more values available, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit to show you. So here you go. You can see the network uplink, power draw, and the weight. Uh, similarly, if you have a graphics uh, ML workload, uh, you can select this one. And then there is a bunch of uh, different choices. So I'm going to zoom it back in so you guys and girls can see it better. So as you can see, you can just select one and then <laughs> place order uh, from the console. However, before placing the order, let's check out the price. I don't want to get a big bill. Uh, so let's click this Outpost pricing page. Okay, let's see United States. Okay, so Outpost pricing comes in two different uh, variances. So one is you don't pay anything upfront and then you pay some particular amount monthly or you can pay everything upfront and then you don't pay anything monthly. Uh, so this page has the categories such as uh, testing units, general purpose units, uh, compute optimized units, graphics. So it has categorically put all those available outposts uh, and their prices. Also, before you order it, it's going to ask you a series of questions. Uh, let's see if I can show you. Okay, so if I click create outposts, uh, let's say create site. So you have to give your address and there is a bunch of uh, requirements uh, like a temperature range, uh, humidity range, airflow, and then uh, facility clearance requirements, uh, rack position, uh, power information. Uh, if you have redundant power, network uh, for installation, uh, what kind of fiber you have and then other stuff. Uh, so definitely uh, it, it requires a lot of information. So once you fill up this information and select uh, the outpost you want, you can select it right from the console and it's going to get shipped to you, uh, which is pretty, uh, pretty incredible. However, uh, this is a little bit more than I could spend uh, for my uh, tiny little personal projects. Uh, however, for enterprises, this is definitely an attractive proposition. I actually get to see and touch an actual outpost in last year's reInvent. It's actually a pretty well-built unit. Uh, it's pretty cool. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you liked the video, click the like button, smash it if you're into that kind of stuff, and subscribe. I have a bunch of other helpful videos on AWS and how to switch your career. Uh, check them out. Uh, all right, I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.